Veterans Clinic won't be in spot. And we really wanted to put this on for everyone tonight because we're kind of celebrating with the people who are in the South East Coast. So um, throughout the evening, we're going to have a brief drawing. Um, we would like to, to thank Pat Crane for donating his, his services and his time tonight. Um, and the exceptional self-defense master. And then we've got um, Brian Lizzini, who's a police officer here in the city. Great, thank you very much. I'm Ryan Lazini with Worcester Police Department. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I've been involved in law enforcement for about 13 years. I spent 10 years in the Lake County Sheriff's Department and the last three with Worcester City. I've worked in several capacities, including detectives. Uh, uh, short time with narcotics investigations and just general support work. I'm uh, currently a certified drug recognition expert and crime scene investigator. Uh, I really enjoy the opportunity to be able to come and speak at uh, events like this. It's really important when we get the message out for self-defense, especially for females, uh, and especially here in Boise with the light of the recent events on the Green Belt. Uh, I'm going to just talk very basically about some of the crime prevention strategy that you can use. It's going to be a very short uh, speech on my, my part to go and turn it over to Pat so that you can hopefully learn some hands on and use it for self uh, Some things I want to cover are sometimes people have the mindset that crime did not happen to them. We take a whole lot of effort to lock up our cars, our houses, and make sure they're secure in the parking lot, but we really don't do much for ourselves. <coughs> And you have to have a mindset that if you don't think crime is right for you, I have a whole list of uh, female victims on my desk that you can talk to, and they'll tell you different. Uh, especially some of the women along the green belt that haven't had not you know tremendous tragic events, but it's mostly nuisance stuff. Who gets bugged by creeps. I don't mean to be politically incorrect, but that's what I call them creeps. And you'll learn real quick now how to deal with them and uh, those folks. You need to be aware of your environment. Like I said, you're aware of car burglars, home burglars. You lock your cars up, you lock your houses up, but you really don't pay attention to your environment when you walk outside or when you're just taking a walk in the park. You need to look around. If something looks funny, then it probably is. You need to use your instinct. If a class like a duck walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So keep that in mind. If you're just walking in, in a grocery store, uh, keep an eye on the environment. If somebody, some creep falls way out in the parking lot, get in your car, do what you can to get away. Try to get a good description so if they do approach you uh, more than just a hello, then you can call law enforcement and get a pretty good description of the suspect so you can hopefully find them. Um, you need to walk with confidence, walk with stride, put a, put a confidence in your stride when you're walking around. That's really important. A lot of these uh, suspects will prey on women that are weak. And that's walking with your head down, your shoulders kind of down, and just kind of walking in a very passive manner. Don't be afraid if you think some jerk is following you, don't be afraid if some of gets off. Get them off. And be strong, yell at them, scream at them, whatever you gotta do to get them to turn away. Uh, sometimes people say just to keep your mouth shut, don't say anything, and just walk away. I don't agree with that. I think it starts verbally. And you need to really, really reiterate that to yourself and to your, your loved ones too. I mean, kids the same way. Uh, don't be afraid to tell somebody to take a hike. And again, paying attention to your instincts is very, very important. And as a police officer, I think I have, you know, police work, there's an old saying that's 98% word and 2% sheer terror. And that's pretty true. We have a mindset in law enforcement, a survival mindset. And you have to keep that in mind if something tragic were to happen, that you have to have a, a survival attitude that you are going to come out of this just fine. If you give up, then that's, that's not a good thing. We're trained that 
anytime something traumatic happens to you. I should say, also in my background, I got a medical background. I was a reserve with any kind of paramedic for several years, 1988 to about 1995. And this is a very true statement. If something tragic happens to you, either uh, what, getting shot, as an example, I'll use that just because I'm in law enforcement. If you are in the right mindset and you know what happened to you, chances are very, very, very high that you'll survive. Very high. So keep that in mind. If you're completely aware of your surroundings and know what happened, then chances are you're going to survive. And you can't give up no matter what happens, you can't give up. Very, very important. Uh, let's see, prevention is always the best defense. Home and vehicle, location, security, everything pretty much covered that. Uh, avoid places and situations which makes you a, a needed target. Leaving a party, leaving a concert is an example. Try not to set yourself up for you know, a purse snatching. You know, we, we've been telling people take responsibility on the green belt. Don't walk out there at 10 o'clock at night. I, I hate to say this, but 25 years ago, that was fine. We could walk the green belt. Women could walk it alone without any trouble. Bottom line is you can't. And, you, know, you just you got to use common sense. Walk with a partner, walk with a dog. Uh, be prepared. Be prepared for somebody in the bushes. Fortunately, Boise is still a very, very, very safe place. I challenge anybody to find a city this size that has a local primary like we do in Boise. But again, you have to be prepared to be on the record. Um, let's see, if you can't flee, what are some of the options you have? You know, passive, using your voice and acting strange. Again, just screaming at people, uh, telling them that to uh, take a hike. That's, that's always my, that's always my option. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about weapons. If you've got, if you're going to carry a weapon, when you think about carrying a weapon, you need to ask yourself some questions. Number one, it's a philosophical question. Are you prepared to hurt somebody or kill somebody? You need to really ask yourself that. Because if you're not mentally prepared, I'm not too sure I would be carrying a weapon. That's, that's just my opinion. Are you prepared if somebody's gonna take that away from you? Are you strong enough to keep a hold of it? To make sure somebody doesn't use it against you? You need to realize that as well. Also, the weapon available to use. Obviously, if you carry a pepper mace or something inside your car and keep it under your front seat and you're walking in front of the grocery store out to your car, I don't know what good they're going to do. They're going to protect underneath the front seat, I guess. Get somebody get under there. Uh, we, plan, let's see, we plan for jobs, vacations, and so forth, but we don't really plan for our own safety. Anytime you're walking around, again, you go wherever you're environment. Look around. I always have a plan. If I stop somebody, uh, just as an example, police officers are trained this way, I, every single time I make a traffic stop, I look around at my environment, and I see if this happens, what am I going to do? I play what-if scenarios all the time. And it's someday that's going to save my life. I'm always playing with this scenarios. I, I lay, sometimes I, I can't sleep, I'll lay awake at night and I'll dream if I have this type of situation or a family fight. And it may be even a house that I went to earlier in the day. I think about all my escape plans. And you really need to play what if scenarios. It just, it, it's kind of fun to, to run that through your mind if you're going to, a, going to a store or going for a walk. Always look around and say, okay, if somebody comes out of this, out of these bushes, what am I going to do? Part of that is being aware of your surroundings, knowing where you are. Is there, a, is there a, a place or a business where there's lots of people that you can run to? Is there a little bit area that you can run to to avoid the attack? So those are some of the things you really need to, to, uh, to run through. I, I can't really, on behalf of the police department, I can't advocate packing new weapons. I'm not going to sit here and, and and tell you to because it's just a huge liability without the proper training. For example, pepper mace, we have to be sprayed. I've been unfortunately sprayed about a half a dozen times because the officer that was the target was me. It's not going to kill you. We've got about two pepper mace I want to talk about for just a minute because pepper mace is really interesting. Sometimes it doesn't work on people, 
we have some officers that, that, that absolutely have no effect on them. For me, it pretty much puts me in the intensive care unit. I mean, not really, but it is, it is really debilitating. But you also have to remember that if, if you have to look at the, if you're packing pepper juice, you have to make sure that it's up to date. The pepper spray actually doesn't expire. The, it, it, pepper spray is nothing but hot peppers. Capsicum is what it is. It's like jalapeno peppers ground up or habanero peppers ground up. That's the active ingredient. It's what does expire in those little keychain pepper spray holders that we propel them. Uh, I had an incident where I needed to use it. It's not a keychain version, but a large bottle version. And I hit the uh, trigger on it and the spray went out about a half an inch and down to the ground because the propellant was expired. So you need to check those on a regular basis. Buy quality stuff, don't buy garbage. Uh, you know, I mean, cheaper is not better when it comes to this stuff because it's the propellant that they do use. That seems to be the, the, the if you want to call it a weapon of choice for most women, it's, it's pepper spray. So keep that in mind. You need to check it on a regular basis. The question that always arises for law enforcement officers is what force can I use? What without me to Women, I'm not too concerned about. I don't get it as much from women that I do from the men. Uh, hey, if, you know, if I hurt this guy, what's going to happen? Well, the bottom line is you need to do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And don't worry about it after. Uh, the state law says you can use whatever force is necessary to effect an arrest. That includes a misdemeanor. Somebody's going to fight with you. Well, you can use whatever. This is the guideline the police use, and it's the same as citizens. You can use whatever force is necessary to effect an arrest. Bottom line, that's, that's what it is. Um, is there anything else? Um, I said, mindset is everything, it really is. Mindset is everything. You need to practice self defense techniques. Uh, when Pat shows you some of these techniques, you need to practice them at home. Be afraid to keep using them because if you, if, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Guaranteed. I mean, that's why we, we practice, you know, we practice a couple times a year, and that's nearly not enough. I mean, it's, we need to be practicing as law enforcement self defense techniques weekly, maybe twice, three times a week in order to be proficient at it. Unfortunately, we don't. Is there any questions? Don't be afraid to ask questions either. I mean, that's why I'm up here. People usually have really questions to ask the cops and here's a chance. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah? Um, you know, in the old days when we first started carrying things, it was just either the can or the can. Here it's actually the game. Is it all the same stuff as the pepper spray? No, you, you, you can't. Or if you had to play garlic, you can use the other garlic. No, no. It, that's not true. I, the biggest reason we switch to pepper spray is there are really absolutely no ill effects from it at all, uh, even including asthmatic patients. CN and CS, you might have some problems with asthma patients, where pepper spray is completely natural. Uh, the other thing is, is clean up is a lot easier with pepper spray. CS and CN sticks around a while, and the little flakes or whatever, the little spores from it, um, land on everything, and it's just I would. I would buy it at a specific store, maybe a law enforcement outlet or something like that. The little keychain ones, I'm not too sure how effective those are. I, I haven't heard really any good things about them. Usually the little bit bigger canister is the way to go. Uh, but again, I want to make it real clear that I'm not advocating people to carry pepper spray. That's very important for you to know because in order for you to carry it, you have to be sprayed with it and go through the training regimen that law enforcement goes through. Um, if you do get sprayed with pepper mace, you have about two or three seconds of good quality time before you go blind and start grabbing through your eyes. So you need to realize that it's, it's, it's kind of a painful experience, but it goes away. I mean, it's just like squirting yourself in the eye with a lemon or something, or, or a pepper, you know, you're cutting up jalapeno peppers and you start rubbing your eye. And you're just going to realize that if somebody uses a chemical agent on you, you better utilize the first few seconds that you have to either escape or fight back. 
You can lay down there on that ground for a long time. Okay? Uh, it's not as easy as you think. We do a lot of ground fighting in our school, and you can survive an awful long time with some of the things we're going to show you. Okay? So I don't want you to say, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to run away. <laughs> I want you to drill that technique on them until they can't continue. Okay? Hopefully they can't run after you. But you know, whatever you're going to do to them, you do to them well. Make it stick. Okay? Just because you get your hand up, pop them hands out when you run. They're going to grab it again, and they're going to grab you again and again. Okay? And you're going to have to fight it again and again. It's not going to be this one shot deal. If you do, hey, you lucked out. Okay? Just want you to know that. Uh, okay. Um, all the people with uniforms here or have some type of t-shirt or belt on are either some of my students, my instructor, Pastor McCarthy, sitting over here, and other fellow black belts that we've been through martial arts together. Okay. Everyone in here is well qualified. There's a couple people that aren't, <coughs> don't have uniforms on. Which John. John. Okay, John has great experience. So don't hesitate to ask John. Uh, Delcy, my wife here, has been exposed to some of this stuff also. Uh, who's been in my self defense classes before? Raise your hand. There's a few in here. Okay. Okay, first technique. Somebody grabs your arm, okay?
Okay, you grab. I can still go for the eye, too. Or give some thumbs. Then I'll come into the eye. Okay. Eyes are pretty simple. You put the fingers in them and it hurts. Okay. Not much to teach about that. But again, the same idea. Okay, you're picking up a quarter. And I, I still, I still always circle around the thumb. Okay. And I'll come into the throat or the eyes. Always come into the eyes. Life in that situation, go for the eye, okay? Um, then, your alternative, okay? Your alternative here would be to throw all of them. That's not for the left turn. Okay? Uh -huh. All over here, in and down. Mm -hmm. okay. All these dirty tricks that we do, I'll start showing you the dirty trick after dirty trick. The ultimate goal is the finger or the eye, okay? So again, Get some thumbs and go to the eye. 